and the outcome of the matter won't materially affect its results or financial position. The state of California is hoping for a better credit rating on the bonds it plans to issue to pay back the state's general fund for power purchases during that state's energy crisis. But will that be enough to spark interest in the investment community? Ian Els, Kim McNicholas is live in our West Coast Bureau with more on that. Kim? Peter, this week the California PUC authorized an increase in the state's proposed electric power fund IPO from $11.1 billion to $11.9 billion in hopes of getting a better credit rating. To talk more about whether this will increase the possibility of the bond sales success, joining us live from the Amex in New York is Joseph Fitcherry. He's the CEO of Saber Partners. Joseph, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. First of all, what is the investment community's reaction to the IPO increase? Well, I think the uh, investment community welcomes anything that's going to improve the security of, of the bonds for, for repayment and to get the rating agencies comfortable to give them at least an investment grade rating and maybe even an A rating, which, which I understand the treasurer is targeting for. But it also raises the question, why are these massive reserves necessary in order to get a good rating on the bonds? And that raises questions about the underlying credit of this initial off offering for the electric power fund, which is not the state's credit. The state of California's credit is not involved. It is a totally new credit that is tied directly to a rate agreement with the Public Utilities Commission. And it goes through the credibility of the Public Utilities Commission as well as the DWR in terms of maintaining the filings and the uh, fast uh, track approvals that they say that they are going to do. So I think people are going to wait and also see the uh, disclosure document uh, and carefully read that uh, before making any conclusions. So are you comfortable that that credibility cap in California is being filled, at least enough so this bond sale will be a success? Well, I think the, with an investment grade rating, with these, uh, these reserves, the bonds will be sold at a price. Investors are willing to take risks and we're willing to be paid for those. So the bonds, uh, I think, will clear. Um, the question is, uh, at what price will they clear? I think the PUC has been successful in maintaining their role uh, in, the, in this, tra this transaction where the legislation AB1X and the other, I think the desires of, other, of the governor and the treasurer and others to minimize that role. But the PUC maintained and was successful, but it has come at a price, a cost to ratepayers. And that credibility will be judged uh, further in terms of the pricing of the bonds. So do you think plans to shift the power buying back from the state to the utilities will have an impact on investors' confidence at all? If they were able to shift the powering back by the end of the year, as when the DWR, that would be a positive thing. But here we are, uh, at four months to the end of, of the year, four months before the, the power buying authority of DWR expires, and the FERC rule that says that the residual net short must be, uh, at the end of the chain, must have a creditworthy buyer. But neither PG&E nor Edison would meet those standards of being a creditworthy buyer. So it's unlikely that they will be able to p resume repurchasing of the net short uh, come January 1. I think the rating agencies themselves said that yesterday. S&P said that they didn't expect that, and that was one of the reasons they wanted these higher reserves. Uh, and these higher reserves of extra $800 million, almost a billion dollars, uh, are for the possibility that the, the state will still be buying the net short come January 1. So the timing on this bond issue and how much longer can we wait? Um, I think they can wait a long time. Um, I think the treasurer is making a much more deliberate approach than, it, than last year in terms of making sure all the things the rating agency concerns are, are met with and having a schedule, a road show, and, and dealing with the investor questions. So there's going to be many. This is the largest public issue ever. So I think you, we shouldn't rush it. We should take the time to do it right, and I think that's what the treasurer is doing. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I've been talking with Joseph Ajaris, CEO of Sabre Partners, live from the Amex in New York. Peter, back to you.